Okay, so knuckleheads. We've had a fair number of new riders join the knucklehead peloton, and a lot of these guys are wondering, who is Lamond? I hear about Lamond. Is he, is he real? Uh, is he shy? No, he's definitely not me. Uh, is, he, is he important? Is he not important? I want to know about Lamont. So they also want to know, and the main question is, does he like me? Now, I don't talk to Lamont very often, but occasionally I can get him a message. And I recently asked him, hey, Lamont, how can somebody know if you like them? Well, he didn't have much time for me, but he gave me a few tidbits, and I'm going to flesh them out for you on a graph right here. This is how it works. It's a real simple graph, just uh, X and a Y uh, graph. Uh, coordinates. So we're going to take a line here and we're going to go right over there. So we're going to start with a zero, go to a 10. And on the X axis, we're going to put cycling ability. So we have cycling ability. Okay. So if you're a really good cyclist, you're at a 10. If you're a bad cyclist, horrible, you're over here at a zero. We'll make this a little bit longer and a little bit taller. On this axis, on the y-axis, we have 0 to 10 also, but on this axis, it's the BS axis. So BS, if you have excellent BS, you're at a 10, okay? 0, you're not so good. You're, not, you're, you're really pretty bad. You're down here at a 0. So that's kind of the, uh, the two uh, variabilities. That's all you need to know about whether Lamont is going to like you or not. And then we're going to show you how, does he, how do you know if he likes you. This is it. We're going to put something in here called the like-dislike line. And it starts at about a 3, and it goes up and to the right. And if you're on this side of the graph, Lamont likes you. If you're on this side of the graph, dis Lamont dislikes you. Why does it start at a 3? Because if you don't have at least a 3 BS, Lamont is not going to hang out with you. He does not hang around with people with bad BS. So we call this, this is our no-go zone. Okay, now, how do we put people in different places around here? Well, let's just uh, take somebody who's an unbelievable cyclist, but it's hurtful, mean, destroyed people's lives, really kind of a bad person. We're going to put down here Lance Armstrong. Maybe somebody else has done that kind of stuff, but Lance is the prototype. He's way down bottom to the right. But what about the opposite, upper and the upper left? There you got somebody like Mrs. Lamond, Dave Purcell, uh, a buddy who lost his leg in the war, or maybe uh, Marshall Boyd. So we put a few data points up here for those people. They're really great. You love being around them. They're fantastic BS. Um, even if they're liberals, you still like them. And uh, they're really good people. So we like that. But they really aren't very good cyclists. They've kind of forgotten or lost their love for it. They're not so good. So we keep them up and to the left. Very likable, though. Where you want to be. Now... We could also put somebody way out over here, but the problem is, as you get farly to the right, where you're a really good cyclist, it's really hard for Lamont to like you. We call this the coffin corner. Coffin corner, CC. What is the coffin corner? In aviation, the coffin corner is defined by, as a plane flies very high in altitude and goes very fast, they have what's called a maximum Mach number. That's as fast as they can go. But as you climb higher, the uh, stall speed starts to come up and it meets the maximum Mach number. And at some point, you can't go any faster, you can't go any slower, then you crash and you die. Well, in the same way, you could be in the coffin corner of Le Mans light zone. What does that mean? That means that if you're an incredibly good cyclist, you right, have to be right on the edge. You have to be on your game and be very careful with your BS, be very good with it, or you're going to fall into the dislike phase. Somebody up here that would come to mind would be like Jack Stefsinski. Phenomenal cyclist, maybe the best cyclist we'll ever know personally. Way up here in this corner, and he's really a great guy on top of that. He's up here at a 9.5 uh, BS and a 10 cycling, way at the top. And even he sometimes will drop down over here because he just goes a little bit too hard, and that costs him a little bit on his BS. So we could put some different people in different places. Uh, for example, on the bottom left-hand side, you got your serial killers. You know, really the worst of the worst kind of people. They don't have time to ride, so they're not very good because they're always looking for victims. So they're down here to the left. But occasionally, you know, if you happen to hang out with one of them, they actually are, are, are pretty nice people when they're not killing people. So that is kind of something to be thinking of there in the very lower hand corner, barely able to be liked. 
Now, let's put a few other people, a few other of our writers out here. We got somebody like Chad Stevens, who's just an absolutely fantastic guy. We might put him up here at the top. Uh, he actually gets a plus 0.5 because he has a really nice house in Aspen. So he's actually a little bit above that. Um, a Mike Steiner. Steiner, unbelievably great guy, fantastic cyclist, has lived most of his life in this area. He's dropping back over here slowly. Uh, he, he's, he's done really well, especially for somebody with just half a brain. He's an incredible guy. We really like Mike Steiner. Um, yeah, here's an example. Anthony Marlar. Anthony Marlar lives his life way over here somewhere, really super good cyclist, and normally he's in the lake side of, of the di like, dislike line. But when we're riding along and a city limit sign or a county uh, line sign comes along, what does he do? He sprints off. Oh, immediately, boom, he's over here in the dislike phase. Doesn't need to do that. Fortunately, after the sprint, he comes back and he's back in Le Mans good graces quick enough. So that's nice. Or you might have a Hayden Hyde. Hayden Hyde lives out over here somewhere, except Hayden, he gets a bigger dot. So Hayden lives really just on that side of the like-dislike line. He's becoming more and more like, so he's moving up and to the, to the left because he's not winning many sprints anymore. So when he won all the sprints, he was way over here somewhere. He's moved up and to the left, so that, that's good for Hayden. He's done really well on that. Congrats. Um, another person like Anthony Marlar, Chris Loftus. Loftus, he loves to go zoop, zoop over there, then he comes right back. So Loftus normally lives over in the like fight. That's, that's great, we like that. He, he, he plays around and teases us a little bit, that's okay. Um, now, we're talking about Americans. If you start getting somebody from you know, Ukraine or something, well, the old bets are off, especially if you look at his legs and then you find out he's a ballet dancer. So Alexander, fantastic BS, even for somebody from Ukraine, they're, they're kind of weird, but, you know, what can you expect? Uh, but he lives way over here somewhere. Super nice guy, but a little bit too strong. So he sometimes gets down there where he's going a little bit too hard. Uh, Alexander, you can work on that. Okay. Uh, a Matt Laughlin. Matt Laughlin. He's definitely dropped back. Fantastic BS. He's over here somewhere because he rides a gravel bike. He doesn't ever ride a road bike anymore. I loaned him a time trial bike. He never rode it. So, there you go. Um... Uh, I'll tell you another one that scares us. Jay Hurd. Jay Hurd never rides his bike. He comes out once a month, and he still rides like a crazy man. So Jay Hurd, he worries us because once he's off the, uh, the president of the medical staff at the hospital, he's going to have time to ride. He's going to be scary. We've got to watch out for him. Uh, Evan Radler. This is a good story. Evan Radler used to live his life way over here somewhere. He's got about an 8 BS and, a, and a, yeah, at least an 8 cycling, really pretty good. But now that he's starting to learn how to fly his airplane, he doesn't have much time. And so he comes back over here. He gets about a minus 2 on the ability, but he gets a plus 1 because he's a pilot. That kind of thing, you could, that could affect you. Um, we got Oh, we got to throw in family. My, my main man, Ben, Witt, ben Witten, he's way up over here somewhere. We got, he could be anywhere along the top. He can ride easy. He can ride hard. Lamont's going to love him. Yeah. Um, who else? Oh, Laney, our namesake. Laney can live anywhere he wants. He gets to be liked no matter where he rides. Laney Lancard, you get the trump card, which will, you're not actually playing the trump card I'm going to talk about, but you get a free pass. Um, who else? Jack Huff. Jack Huff lives over here. Used to ride with us, doesn't ride anymore. We like Jack. He's okay. If he comes back, he'd be very much liked. Now, there's one more we have to talk about. That's really kind of a problem. And that is a guy that constantly lives over here. I don't think this guy has ever been on the like side. This man right here, very good cyclist, about a 7.5 BS, maybe, maybe an eight occasionally. This is Scotty Dennett. Why does Scotty always have to be such a hard ass? He's going hard, he's, he's kicking us. He, he, never have I ridden with Scotty when he didn't say his legs hurt and he was tired and he, and he couldn't go hard. Every single ride. So, Scotty is uh, also known as Le Mans' little brown nemesis. Okay, so that's sort of some people that we could lay out there. Bob White would be up here very high. He used to be way over here. He's not riding as much, so he drops back a little bit. We like that. Good for Bob. He's, he's gaining more light, farther away from the light line. Positive thing. And um, let's see. Now we have uh, three modifiers we want to talk about. Three modifiers. The first modifier is the... BF modifier. 
This is a good one, okay? You, anyone can employ this. This is a minus 3x and a plus 1y. Minus 3x and plus 1y. So that means if you find yourself on the graph somewhere, you move 3 to the left and 1 up. How does that happen? BF stands for Brad Fortner. Could also substitute for James Freeman. These are guys that are stronger than us. They could go much harder. They choose not to. They choose to ride with the group. They don't run off and leave and, and make, us, uh, make our legs hurt. So that's a positive thing. And so because of that niceness, they get plus one on the BS factor. That allows you to move out of the dislike phase into the like area. You can use that. Okay, now here's one you probably don't want to use. You'd have trouble using this one. This is the EB modifier. The EB modifier is a, a plus 7x and a uh, minus 2y. So you can see if you have to move over to the right 7 and down 2, you're almost surely going to move out of the like into the dislike phase. Probably hard to use the EB modifier. Now what does the EB modifier stand for? EB stands for electric bike. Okay, so if you're riding an electric bike, First off, you should apologize to the world and just go do something else. But if you have to, you have to. We would take maybe people up in this category. Mrs. Lamont might be beneficial here because she could take a, a, you know, a plus seven and a minus two and still be in the light zone. And so could Marshall Boyd. So these are people that could ride an electric bike and still be liked. They get great BS, you like being around them, and they're still not gonna ride off and leave you even with an electric bike. So, okay, now, what else do we have? Oh, we have, a, I'm going to save the last one for the, the final, but there's one more thing we have to flesh out. That is this. This assumes that you're riding in and around Fort Worth or North Texas where it's flat. Occasionally bumps, really not any mountains. If we instead change to the mountains, we're going to put this line here, and this is called the 6% like-dislike line. So now the line at 6%, the dislike line moves up here when you're in the mountains. So if you're going uphill at 6%, LeMond is almost surely not going to like you. Okay, LeMond is heavy, says he's working on it, but he does not go uphill very fast. And there's very few people that he would like to ride with in the mountains. On the other hand, once you get to the top of the mountain, we have another line, which is down here. Actually, it has to be up like that because you can't be below a three. But down here, this is the minus six. And so this is where you're going downhill very fast. And Lamond likes to go downhill, okay? Don't get in his way. Very few people, he, well, basically he's gonna like everybody when we're going downhill, except maybe one guy, that guy, the big guy, Hayden. Hayden knows how to go downhill, he can be tough. But basically going downhill, all is well. Everybody's Lamond's friend when you're going downhill. Okay, one final modifier. This is the FF modifier. Or it's also called the trump card. What do I mean by that? If you employ the FF modifier, you immediately get a minus 10X and a plus 10Y. I think you can see that immediately puts you in the most desirable part of the graph. It puts you up and to the left. So anybody can employ this and immediately drives you up and to the left into the most desirable category. What does that mean? Well, to employ the FF uh, modifier, that stands for flattery, and it will get you far. If you tell Lamond that he's awesome, that he has great BS, and he's a great cyclist, and you let him win a sprint, you immediately get to go up and to the left. The most desirable part of the graft is where you want to be. So, this information is for you guys to use. You can use it to your advantage or your disadvantage. It tells you how you can move about the peloton and how you can interact with Lamont and you know, put yourself in his proper graces. Lesson's over.